Okay, well, good afternoon, and thank you for uh, turning out such great numbers uh, to welcome uh, uh, an esteemed guest here to pieces today uh, in the form of Professor John Holovich, who's a professor of political science at uh, Duke University in North Carolina. Uh, and he's got so many uh, uh, wonderful honors to his name, I, I won't uh, recite them all, but he's visiting here uh, thesis on the invitation of the CSES project, uh, of course, of which he is the chair of Module 5 Planning Committee, and thus mine and many people in the room's boss uh, as head of the CSES, uh, the academic head of the CSES. He's here today to talk to us uh, on a very interesting presentation. Uh, called Institutional Influence on Behaviour, Correcting for Selection Effects Using the CSES. So I'll say no more apart from to welcome you and thank you for coming here. Gisus is delighted to have you. Uh, the floor is yours. Dankeschön. Guten Abend. Okay, now I'm done with my German, except I can, at the end I know how to say, let's go get beer. <laughs> um, so thank you very much. I, I do appreciate uh, the invitation. Pleasure to be here, um, escaping a hurricane to come here. So this is, it was a really good time to come. Um, went right over the house, so it was. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm glad to be here. Um, let me just explain a little bit about this. Is only some of the co-authors in this project. It's actually a class project that I did uh, uh, work, working with a graduate research seminar, um, and that's. The, these are the three. Um, uh, oh, uh, the, well, anyway. So those are the, th the three team leaders of of, of units in this. So there's actually like nine other co-authors. Um, so we can't, we can't publish you know short articles because <laughs> we can't set our title and names on there. Um, <laughs> the, but um, so that 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 explains a little bit about sort of the structure. What we did as well with the, the three people um, below um, are the authors or co-authors of projects that use CSES. They're all from Module 2 data um, who have already published um, papers on uh, using those data. And they're collaborating with us as, um, as we uh, sort of apply the selection modeling that we'll be using to um, with them. And so the idea was, was instead of saying, you know, here is, you know, here's our methodological idea. Everybody who didn't follow it is stupid and should be, you know, rather work together to sort of work together to improve and get to get to the, the best possible product in a, in a in a positive collaborative kind of fashion. So that explains why this slide is as big as it is. Um, and actually, the person who did, well, no, Josh Lerner over there, yeah, he probably did, did more work than, than, than anybody else on this. But um, anyway, so we'll start. <laughs> um, for those, I, I assume everybody here knows CSES. So it's safe? Yes. So um, this is a fantastic project, of course. Um, but, uh, you know, of the set of potentially el eligible democracies to have a national election study and run the module and get their act together but actually fill out the, the long form of the macro data. <laughs> I, I, I having been done many times to try to get my, to remind me to get the US data in, um, know that this is the case. Anyway, so, so there's a lot of reasons why some nations who are potentially eligible don't contribute uh, the data to the CSES project. We're typically more or less around 50% of the potentially uh, applicable nations actually do have an election study, run the CSES module, submit it, and uh, and it's in a, uh, in, a, in a form that's acceptable and usable within the CSES. Over time, different modules, different percentages, but something on the order of about half the countries do and half the countries don't. So that's number one point. Number two is that, um, as you may well expect, the assumption that it's you know um, uh, completely missing at random is implausible in this case. It's you know the 
the European nations, the uh, North American nations always participate. New democracies, less developed democracies, are among those who are, have the most difficulty in uh, getting their act together to be able to do this, um, or in indeed being able to have a national election study at all. Um, and so, <clears throat> so that's point two. So point three then is that the purpose of CSES to be able to make broad comparative statements about the effects of institutional or other social societal uh, uh, level differences uh, in voting and turnout and other kinds of participation and so forth um, are at some risk. Uh, the inferences you make, unless you do something to take into account that the population over which you're trying to generalize is um, is not uh, is not a the data you have is not a random is not a simple random s sample of those uh, those nations. So that's that's the, the problem. Um, a number of people involved with CSES have been talking over the years about doing something about it. And I said, oh, I have nine or 12 graduate students who are looking for something to, to do in their <laughs> research seminar to get a good grade. And I said, one way to get a good grade would be, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and so we decided to, to take this on and to try it out to see what would happen. OK. Um, this, I believe this is CSES2. Yeah, this is CSES2. These are, these are the countries that have actually participated, certainly as a random sample of the, United, of the, of the world population. You can see that they're not, um, you know, Africa's uh, uh, rather unrepresented southern, uh, southern Asia and so forth. Uh, that's, of course, not necessarily the same thing as democracies. But in fact, it, as you sort of look through Latin America and uh, um, Central America, I can't tell, the Caribbean is, is, is rel relatively underrepresented too, that in fact democracies um, are also uh, asymmetrically uh, uh, engaged in, in things. So that's, that's what sort of sets up the, the problem. Um, there, this is a problem, of course, that's been around, standing problem has been around for a long time. Uh, Jim Heckman, when he was a young, young faculty member, sort of developed the, the, sort, of, the sort of standard uh, approach to it. Um, and over time, it's been worked on and worked on. And the selection bias problem, generally, in the context that we're looking at, has you know, sort of two different ways to think about it. And, and then we're going to use an exemplar method that draws off each of the two sort of conceptual ways of thinking about the problem. Um, of course, in, at, some, at some level, they're all, they're, they're rooted in the same basic problem they're trying to solve. And so there's similarities across these, but I'm going to sort of talk about the two different ways of thinking about it. Heckman, Heckman when he originally developed this, thought of it as, uh, as uh, a, a, missing, a missing variable problem, uh, an underspecification. Uh, of, of the equation um, in such that in this case whatever it is whatever it is that um, um, is the reasons why some nations have participated and some nations have not um, is uh, that that measure is something that's not included in your regression model if you think of a simple regression model and so, and so you've left out a, a relevant variable, and so it's underspecified, and, um, and, uh, and especially given that the, the participation measure would be correlated with variables of interest, you would expect that your estimates are biased and inconsistent. Like that's the sort of standard way. And so the Heckman selection method uh, that he proposed himself is essentially um, to come up with an instrumental variable that you substitute in for the, the uh, that, you, that you estimate and, and, and put on the right hand side and, and, and thereby try to re attenuate the uh, unbiased and inconsistency in the estimates, the bias and inconsistency in the estimates. That's, um, that's one. The second is that 
if we think that the countries we have as a sampling from the larger population of all the countries that could have participated, it wouldn't be a problem if it was genuinely a simple random sample of countries. Um, but it's not. And uh, so we need to sort of correct for sampling problems, if you will, I uh, think of it in, in that respect. And, um, and it's a little bit like um, the way we try to deal with internet samples. Um, and you, just, you need to reweight the sample so that it, with the weighting, it looks like it's a, a, a random sample from the population. And so, uh, and so the second method uh, is simply a different way of thinking about exactly the same problem, but I think of it in this way as, a, as, a, as come up with a set of weights that would, uh, that would, in this case, put more weight on the newer and less developed democracies and less weight on the, the, the more advanced and older democracies, if those are the, the particular ways they come about. Now, the, the, the part we're sliding through, um, and I'm not going to do much with the, the technical methodology, although I could do a little bit if you wanted me to. I think I can still do it. I think I'm over, especially over jet lag, I could do it off the top of my head, but probably not. Um, uh, is that um, you know the the, the standard the standard methods have a standard solution, but they assume um, the that that it's not a uh, you don't have multi multiple multiple bleh, excuse me multiple levels of measurement. Uh, so we have surveys that with respondents at the individual micro level. And we have data at the national level, whether it's parties, party systems, or national characteristics, the government, the structure of the government, uh, electoral system, and those sort of things. <coughs> and uh, that, of course, adds uh, a wrinkle. And the wrinkle is particularly that we can go out and measure at the macro level, the national level stuff. We can get measures of nations that aren't included, but we don't have any really good way of making, except, except making up <laughs> data uh, from surveys that weren't connected um, in those nations. Um, and so we're going to be trying to correct estimates working at the macro level uh, that should have a consequence at the micro level, um, but you'd have to sort of really work through to know what you need exactly to get the consistency that you would want out of the estimates. Um, and, and that's it. Uh, how should I say this? An incompletely solved problem at the moment. <laughs> um, but as you'll see, so, so is the estimation uh, that, we're, that I'm reporting. We're, we're partway through it. Um, and, and, and my promise is that for the graduate students in the course that we will Finish and hopefully publish papers or however we end up publishing it before they're tenured. <laughs> <laughs> That's my only hope. <laughs> um, so, oh yeah, so this is that. So, so, okay. So, the procedure that we went through so we have, you know, roughly 200 countries in the world, some fraction of them are democracies. Some fraction of those democracies participated in CSES Module 2 in those particular years, um, 01 to 06, I believe. Um, and, um, and the way we define what the missing set of observations is, we, we took the, the, I think we took the polity score for the countries included, saw what the absolute lowest score was, or I suspect biggest number score, but in polity. Uh, and then they said that defines the baseline. And we're going to compare it to all the nations that have at least that level of polity democracy score from the polity groups or higher. And went out, and this is, this is where it became a class project, went out and gathered as much data about the government, the economy, the society, as we could easily gather that it would be potentially replicable um, across uh, people and, and years. Um, 
to provide us with a set of measures that are available for included and excluded countries that can serve as the raw material for a first equation in which you either estimate the probability that a country participated in CSES or not, or allows you then to provide the estimate for the weighting factor, what would make what you would have to do sort of one minus that would be the one minus that probability of participating would be the weight that you would use to to make it look like a uh, a sample of the uh, full population of countries that it was sort of essentially a simple random sample as one in chances of participating. And there are a number of different ways of thinking about this first equation. If you think about, in the Heck, if you think about it in the Heckman way, you want to have a theory, in a sense, of participation. Right? And so that you can get measures that are plausible measures to use as it, to create an instrumental variable for estimating the probability of participation. So you would want things like the things I've been talking about, age of democracy, the age of the particular of the party system, the level of economic development, social level of social development, and those sorts of things, um, and have that as a as a as as your you know, sort of not highly rigorous, but plausible, plausible theory of why these variables, not others. <clears throat> if you're a sort of, if you sort of think of the weighting as the way particularly big data people like to think of it, sort of working back, then you want to just cast your net as widely as possible, throw everything into it, and, you know, whatever works, works is the sort of big data sort of way of thinking about it. So those are two very different ways of thinking about the construction of the first, the variables that go into the first equation, therefore you need to measure and so forth. Um, there's a problem in doing this that's a trade-off that you face, particularly in this context where we have a bunch of different um, uh, we're applying it to a bunch of different applications that have their own theory and their own set of measures that are theoretically relevant to their particular problem at hand. And that, so that um, you'll have in some of these equations, some of the things that you might think is relevant for participation is actually substantially relevant to the theory engaged as well, level of economic development or so forth. And so, and, and so you need to be sort of careful in the construction of the first equation. Well, I'll sort of point to sort of indications of this. You want it to be able to add some additional explanatory above and beyond the part that should be attributed to, in effect, the theory, which would be, in the Heckman selection case, the second equation um, that you're trying to correct the estimates of, the original equation trying to correct the estimates of. So this is a sort of trade-off that you face in a practical way uh, in dealing with this. Um, um, the, the other thing you would think of, if you're thinking of this as, you know, a problem tailored especially to the specific uh, instance of CSES, um, you have a lot of users, you also go over a lot of time and you have different modules and you might want to be able to come up with a, a mechanism that would stand well for CSES for the 25 years or so that it's been around. Um, and so it's an, uh, yet a third, third kind of constraint in thinking about this. Um, I don't know if you'd be able to see this. Um, <coughs> I realize, let's see, oh, this one, hmm. Yep, no, okay, so, um, so I thought I had different, oh, well, anyway, this doesn't matter. You can sort of see this is GDP, the age of democracy, a, bu a bunch of things, and as you can see, mo almost all of these things are strongly correlated. So that there's, this is the, a low, logic regression of one is participated, zero didn't participate. And all you're supposed to see is here's a set of things. Uh, it actually goes down a little bit lower than this. Um, <laughs> there are a few extra variables too. Uh, when we're doing the, uh, the, the, the weighting especially, you see a, a significant, a substantial number of these things you know, are really substantially related to the, the uh, probability of um, being in, of being a participant. That is to say, it's clearly not random. There's a lot of non-randomness to this, a lot of things. So the N is 150 or something? 
So yeah, so it's about, well, it's actually you know, for democracies. It's in 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 2001 to 2006. It's around 88, I think, okay. something like that. But this is yet another thing that you know you're dealing with a relatively small n in 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 this in this kind of context, and so uh, there's a, a serious problem of overfitting, a potential of overfitting. Um, you need to worry about not necessarily this equation. It's just, but but then it goes when you go into the second equation, you're going to you know, anyway. So that so there's that. Um, uh, this is the inverse probability weighting to get a, the second m method, um, <coughs> and you know, so I've already explained the sort of con conceptual nature of it. There's, this is one of the things that's getting a lot of attention now in a lot of different ways, um, and uh, uh, so you know there. A lot of sort of very specific wrinkles. You need to think about these things for which particular kind of weighting you want to go through when you're talking about individual applications. Um, and so, you know, we get sort of relative, you know, Coase K and uh, 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 Mi and, and Rakovic, you know, have have now proposed this scoring method, and you can just follow the method directly. Um, uh, as sort of the the hot news, I think it's about as new uh, a method that sort of worked out enough to have a couple of papers about it. Um, um, uh, and, and so we happen to use that, but you know that basic idea is going to be the same no matter which spe specific uh, you know virtue uh, is. If you're trying to get the the weighting of your sample back to uh, so it looks like it's a uh, a random sample, the general population. I'll skip over this. This is the one I fixed up. Oh, there it is. I'm going to skip to to uh, to the this this is the the weights that are attached to some of the countries. These are these are the ones from the inclu included countries. Um, um, uh, I think these are all included countries. Um, as you can see down here, the you know the what used to be known as the first world gets kind of densely packed, um, and, and you can't even read it. But uh, uh, so the so this is the probability of having a CSES, and this is the weighting, and so it's a nice smooth uh, uh, sigmoidal shape, um, and it obviously weights by sort of recency of democracy and/or development and that sort of thing. Um, and low scores in democracy, tend typically too. So that's what that looks like. Uh, this was the this this was I think the the slide I meant to show you before about quite as goofy a set of names on the, them. And this is yeah. So this is this was one I said. It's, so it turns out that the, of course the same first equation applies no matter which method you're using. So so um, so so this is both for Creating the instrumental variable for the Heckman selection and for the weighting, so it's just the inverse uh, uh, of the probability, the estimated probability um, uh, the inverse that's that that's then used to resample. This is so showing uh, sort of how different things are. You want to look at sort of the means. The standard error is also this is this becomes really important because if you have a small number of countries standing in for, as you do, for the relatively high weighted ones, it's going to really affect the standard errors that you get out of this, and you hope to be able to recreate it. So this is be before balancing, and you know, there's you know, pretty substantial differences in, the, say, the means across many of these, not all of them, obviously, uh, but some of them have really, you know, age of democracy is quite a bit different. Uh, upon resampling, it still doesn't correct the weight back to zero. It narrows the, so this is sort of the extreme version. Uh, that's why I'm pointing to the age of democracy. It's still considerably off um, what you would say is a simple random sampling. And so I suggest there's room for improvement. So the idea would be that we would go back and measure, try to get more measures to, 
more measures is in fact what we're doing now, getting a larger and larger set of things that we can sort of throw into this that will uh, make this, uh, the, you know, that will make these two means and these standard deviations as well uh, closer together, so that we so that this will have this will have the look of a of a of a sample. Okay, so uh, there are three applications. I gave a version of this. Uh, at the uh, most recent APSA meetings, and somebody walked up with them, basically handed us a data set and said, "Can we pick? Can we play too?" Um, and so we're we're looking into whether we can work out expanding yet another one. So this, this has sort of gotten obviously got somebody interested um, in this. Uh, there uh, there there are sort of three different papers, slightly different things. Given the nature of this, it's less important, I think, for you to understand what the papers already were, and how, but to see that there is, in fact, uh, changes that, that come through this. Uh, so, um, uh, so in this one, uh, <laughs> yeah, the Pedro has mixed feelings about his agreement to participate. The thing he saw is the sort of variable that was the most consequential in his theoretical explanation uh, of uh, which was the presidentialism variable is our example of how it uh, uh, of how uh, things uh, tended to decline. So here's his presidentialism. You know, it goes down towards. So this is the original. Okay, here it is with the Heckman selection. So it kind of it, these are different dependent variables, right? So uh, so these kind of decline pretty substantially, <laughs> um, making him less than happy. But but what I wanted to point out here, this is the thing is uh, this one this presidentialism stayed more or less as it was supposed to. Uh, this is this is the variable that is the uh, instrumental variable for the this. Um, this is where it's significant. This is say where it's adding something above and beyond what the theoretical model is explaining. So it's actually correcting. So this is the one equation in which that is true, uh, that the explanatory value, value it didn't get all sort of soaked into it. Uh, and here is where that came true. It's also the case where GDP uh, became a significant influence. It was very small. You go back here. It was very small in the original. Uh, and it becomes, you know, substantially larger and significant in in the in the corrected version. Let's just move on to want to uh, go through a couple of the other ones here. I want to go especially to uh, this one that uh, uh, Andre Blay and, uh, and and Singh have. Ooh, this didn't come through very well. So this is uh, this is an example in which. Uh, this is the original model. This was the, 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 the fitting of this. It just put it up over the top. So this is, you, you could expect two things to happen as you fit uh, this better. Either things that, that weren't significant become significant, or the things that weren't, were significant or important or substantially large uh, became smaller. So there are cases where it, it turns out this way. By far, the standard case is that you lose significance. Um, what seems to be, a, on average, explanatory uh, uh, changes. I want to just go. Pardon? It's all publication bias. Yes, right. It probably is. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to point to, and, and this is the one in which we we had the largest impact on the uh, uh, on the, uh, individual level. Right. So we have, so we're co correcting at this level. Uh, and so these things that are characteristics of the sample, we see things that go away, right? Um, mostly because of an, of, an of increased standard error uh, in the in the fit, uh, because you're adding in, you're re-weighting things, right, in such a way that your your most precision is being weighted down because this it's where the densest pack of your observations are, and the and the where the sparsest data is is being weighted up. Um, so these are the trade-offs that you have to face um, in, in doing this, um, and 
and, and okay, so that's where we are right now. Uh, the it is possible to do this. One of the things I wanted to point out about the individual level observations was that um, correcting at the macro level has reveals effects at the micro level. Like, there was some possibility that wouldn't happen, right? It's quite possible. And of course, in individual applications, it might not. Um, uh, the biggest conclusion is that no matter which, every correction you do, you get different results um, from the original. That is to say, it does matter that we take into consideration which countries are uh, participating and which aren't in the, in the CSES and do need to think about the consequences that we'll have for our inferences and provide some kind of a testing to be able to, to be able to justify the inferences we want to make off CS, CSES data that, um, that uh, the estimates we're reporting have a, a reasonable level of consistency uh, for us to, um, uh, to be able to uh, claim plausible plausibility for our results. Uh, and the, the final thing is that we are working in a, in a world of relatively small n, um, it, especially at the, at the nation level. And, and um, so as we tinker with this, it's constraining the amount of information we can pull out with respect to our theory from this limited data, even when we have a huge n. Um, of, of individual level observations. So that's the, the project we're engaged in. Right now we're about halfway through. And, and so, um, so it's at the sort of hardest to present because we think we know what we, we want to do. We think we have some results, but we have a lot of work to do to sort of, sort of pull it back together into a, into a coherent whole. So I'm really looking forward to any comments or uh, suggestions you have uh, before I use the German that I understand is the word for beer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I will take a, a questions, but if you could just say who you are, so John knows who he's talking to first. So uh, my name is Thomas Kvend. I think John knows me quite well. <laughs> um, two questions. One is, um, I guess, so and Andrew Gelman has this idea of Mr. P of cross stratifying uh, non-random samples that are to be done online and. I don't know the literature too well what the relationship is with uh, inverse probability weighting. It seems to me that inverse probability weighting is capitalizing on the propensity score, which is a, you know, like a norm, a one-dimensional functional thing. And this uh, Mr. P seems to be multidimensional. So my intuition would be that Mr. P would be able to uh, produce a better fit in a way than, than IPV, but I don't know. Um, that's, maybe maybe you, you want to think about this, whether this could be as, as another suggestion, or maybe this is just off the hook or whatever. Maybe it doesn't make sense. The other, point, the other question I have is, um, now, weighting is not a panacea, right? You know, if, if, especially if you upweight um, cases that are essentially not there in the Data. Um, but it could happen that you know some combination of of a strange fellow who you know who is you know I don't know whatever you know strange case that you have to upload given our uh, the results we have from the first equation of, of the Hexman model um, you know by just by doing this we might be too far away from actually the data we have and therefore the inference. Might, uh, might be actually worse, or you know, the results we get might be actually worse. So, let me take the first question first, which is that one of the things that we, the, the first things we did, it, we actually did it live and in class just for fun, for fun, was essentially a principal components analysis of the, of the macro data set that we collected. And it came out to be a very nice two dimensional uh, solution. That is, there are two clear and strong dimensions. Um, there's a sort of a political economy and a you know, trade and openness and a variety of things like that that we don't, don't have in this right now. Um, and, um, and a sort of social, sort of social 
uh, development kind of thing, the intermortality, one, the life expectancy, and those sort of things. Um, it basically meant we wanted to really collect more on this. But anyway, so, so, so you can have multi-dimensional data feeding into your estimate of the weighting. Um, and I think that's not 100% different from, if I remember Mr. P, um, <laughs> um, that, that, it, that it's sort of similar. And so, so I, I'm not sure. I, have, I actually didn't think about using, how can I not think of using Gelman, of course. Um, it usually makes them available easily to, 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 to run. Anyway, we may want to do sort of comparison. Um, but this leads directly into your second question, which is, Either way you think think about it, that whether it's the sparseness of the data or the the reasonableness of the estimate of whether it's a weighting term or or the 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 uh, instrumental variable, you're you're absolutely right that you know that the the the, the degree to which is sparse this figure, uh, you know. Uh, you know, it's just a standard regression problem. If you, going up here, this little bit is probably well estimated. This thing, prob if we had put up the standard errors, then we couldn't read anything, but the country names but, but are quite wide. And so there's a lot of room. So, so you could, so there's, there are two things you can do. One of them is you could simply do a sensitivity by running it off of stuff, uh, estimates that go off of the various range of, of the of it, sort of what seemed like a reasonable level of confidence. The second thing you can do, which is what I would hope to be able to do now, is see where CSES over time if is it, you know, is it always is it always like this? Is it always you know, are all the mods like this? And should CSES, for example, put more of its resources into trying to encourage particular configurations of nations to participate? We, probably, we can't make them have national election study, although we may be able to help them get it across the, 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 you know, the starting line. Um, but we certainly could perhaps do, you know, so we help with that, or we could help perhaps um, ensuring that if they do have a national election study, that, that it includes the CSES, um, which might require some significant amount of money. I mean, they may be thinking, we just don't have the stuff we need to do, we've used up all our resources, you know, so if we maybe help them get a little bit bigger resources so they could fit in the module, things like that, that may um, yield a better product for CSES over time. Okay, question? I'm Charles Poppen, this is a very interesting uh, presentation. And when you, uh, you show us your very good participation uh, I'm very interested in the uh, methodology side, cross uh, national survey project, uh, European social survey, ICP, uh, they examine the last degree, uh, sponsors and all that stuff. How this depends on uh, interviewer, the payment, uh, the sample frames. In a way, the survey environment. You look very much on the kind of the social demographic environment of the survey. I wonder if, if, if you could kind of like do more like the more indicators from the survey environment side. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. And the training to one country. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have a bad interpenetration. Right, right. So that's yeah, that's 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 very very helpful. Thank you. Um, the other one of the things we have thought about for improving the estimates, particularly when we get to, to genuine multi-level models, is that these countries may not have CSES measures, but they may have a survey a quality enough survey that we can come up with a lot of the demographics and stuff. And we may be able to fill in some of these, even if we don't have the, the module questions, we may have other, other kinds of questions. So that's an, another way of sort of getting at more information that we can, can feed into this, um, even without 
you know, expanding it. Of course, this, of course, in historic recreation um, is, you know, we're, we're more limited than, than uh, if we're doing it currently. Like in the mid middle of now, the fifth module is just launched. Um, we may want to think about finding surveys from what's likely to be missing. We have a probably have a pretty good sense of what countries are likely to participate in, not, right? And we may try to see if we can find something that we can use to sort of fill in and, and, and make this part denser, even without having the, you know, be able to do the, the, the second equation. And that might get around some of the, the problems of, of sparseness over here, too. Other questions? Don't we have data from Russia and Romania in module one? Module, this is module two. So, um, oh, this is just my module two. Yeah, yeah. So we do have these are. I think these are the included ones. Yeah. Oh, these are the included ones. Yeah. I, think so. I think that's right. Yeah. 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 So I wanted to emphasize that you know that there's you know pretty big spaces. You make it a, a readable figure, so you can get three. It's actually a three-dimensional figure. Yeah, it would be would be nice to have in this graph the non-included ones. Yeah. Now, right? Yeah. Different kind. Right. Are there comments or questions? Last chance. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you very much, John, uh, for coming and being our guest, and thank you all for, for attending. Yeah. And for a, a very